Hey, thanks everybody for joining us. I wanted to do a quick uh, demonstration to guess could see how track attack works. So we don't always have access to a full-on racetrack to do all of our testing. So uh, we actually do a lot of uh, simulated testing around our neighborhood here. And so we're in the middle of the Northwest right now. I'm uh, going to show you how track attack works. So as you can see, track attack, uh, for track attack, it's just an app and we have it mounted on a uh, RAM mount. As you can see, it, uh, it's pretty straightforward. These are one of the better mounts, uh, but we have done extensive testing with some of the pretty basic cheapo mounts that you see at Best Buy for like 25 or 30 bucks. The last thing I wanted to do, show you guys before I get started here is that, um, and I suggest is that when you are on the racetrack and you're using uh, track attack is obviously have it mounted securely. But the second thing is I really suggest that you have a power uh, source connected to it. So that way you don't have to worry about your battery running out um, in the middle of a 20 or 30 minute session, just depending on what's going on, what other background apps are going on. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started with uh, the session here. And what you do is we go to the home screen, hit start new session, and what the app is doing is it's based off of where you're at right now. It's looking around about a mile and a half uh, circumference to figure out whether there are any official tracks that we have in the database or any user created tracks because anybody can create a, uh, a, a racetrack. So what you see here is since we're at my neighborhood is a bunch of racetracks that we've created around my neighborhood for testing. And, uh, and it's just a bunch of garbage data, but it's, it helps us out a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and select uh, this one, which is just a few seconds away. And what's happening here is that uh, the first thing is it's getting the GPS ready. And all we need is for the app to have within 10 meters or less of accuracy. And then our algorithm takes over and, uh, and we're able to calculate your lap times uh, and session times super, super accurately. What it's waiting for as soon as we get started is for us to uh, pass through the start finish line. And as soon as it does that, the, the lap timing will, will uh, occur right away. The last thing I wanna show you guys before we get started is that you have an option to just do data logging and not record video. And what you do here is you go up to this button and you press that. And once you see the camera crossed out, that means that the it will be it will be not be recording video and it will be just doing your data logging. So that, that way, in case you know that you have a practice session, you don't really care about the video, you can do that as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, the last thing here is that, as you can see, the, the 12 meters, uh, it's not act, it's not uh, ready per se. We can still force it into it. And for just for these purposes here, we're gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna hit start and it's gonna prompt you and say, hey, do you really wanna do this? And you can say, cancel, no way for it to get better. Or you can hit, hit uh, yes and override it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue and go. And we are about uh, five, 15 seconds away from the, where the start finish line is for this track. This is a pretty cool neighborhood and it's actually just a full oval loop. It makes it very straightforward for us to drive around. Okay, now we're coming up on the start finish line. Start finish line for this one is 149th Street, which is just this block right here. And we're gonna see is a slight delay, about a five second delay. Here's 149th Street, about five seconds from now. Oh, even faster, starting first lap, so it recognizes it immediately. Sometimes it'll take about a five second delay, there you go, um, for it to register the uh, trigger of, of passing through that start finish line. And then it'll get going. Don't worry about it, it will show up there and all the timing is accurate. accurate. So now we're just going to do a couple of laps and uh, we'll talk to you guys here in a second. Okay, now we're coming up on uh, the first complete lap of, the, of this session. So as you'll see, the lap time is going. Here's the start finish line right here. And about five seconds later, it'll start, it'll flash here telling us what the lap time is. There you go, so a minute 13.92. Now we're gonna do a couple more, uh, a couple more laps and then we'll finish up this session. Okay, we just finished up what was the third lap of the session and we're gonna call it good here. Now I'm simulating coming off of a racetrack. Um, so once you're done, you just come off the racetrack, you come out to your paddock, you know, don't worry about anything, any, doing anything bad until you get somewhere safe. So this is now we're in the paddock row. 
you hit stop and it'll confirm here that hey everything is saved you're good to go and then it'll go back to the home now in one of our upcoming updates we're going to have full landscape support so bear with us here but then uh next step here is you go into session history you'll be able to see that session that i just created here so here's the track name there we go so there's the track name there's the session start time number of laps and the fastest lap that i had so you go through and you select on that uh, individual session, and then we're able to see uh, the uh, lap times for each one of those uh, laps. Now, instantly, once you come off the track, you're gonna be able to play the whole thing. If I hit play up here, it'll start playing from the beginning of the very first lap, or I can go into any one of the individual laps and start playing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. About five seconds from now, oh, even faster. And there you go. So now you hear me in my annoying voice let me turn that down so now you're able to see and immediately play back uh, your session uh, right after you get off the track and what you're seeing here is obviously your lap time for that lap uh, you're able to see this the current speed as you're going through the at that individual part of the track and you're able to see the track map so this is the actual driven line of where you went red means that you're decelerating green means that you're accelerating and yellow means that you have a constant speed okay so the next thing is, and, and I'm going to pause here from recording, is after you do all your sessions, it's really important for you to get back home uh, where you have Wi-Fi, and then you're able to go and upload your sessions. So when we come back in just a second, we'll be back at my house at, uh, where we have Wi-Fi, and I'll show you how to do the uploading and being able to see it on the website. All right, we are back at my house now, and what we're trying to simulate here is when you're done with uh, your, your track day or your race, and you come back home or somewhere where you have a reliable Wi-Fi connection, uh, somewhere uh, either DSL speed or better, and you know you have a good quality signal and can be there for uh, not too long, but for a good while, uh, you're able to connect to that and then be able to upload your data, uh, your video data to the TrackTac servers. And then that's when we do the uh, real-time processing and editing of your session so that you're able to view lap by lap online and start streaming it from the phone. So what we do is when you get uh, when you get home, I'm uh, just for a demo purposes here. I'm I'm basically sitting right next to the uh, Wi-Fi router at my house, and we use go into Track Talk. I'm trying to make sure we focus in here. You go into uh, Upload Data, and you see the session that I created was uh, only three laps, and by default at, in Track Attack, Track Attack, you have the video quality setting to be at about DVD quality uh, level. What we find is that a uh, that was about a 10 minute or so session. Um, you'll end up recording about you know 28, 30 megs, uh, megabytes worth of data, uh, video data. Uh, typically in a track day, if you have about a half an hour session or so, we get upwards of just under uh, about 100 megabytes or so. And the upload time that that takes is about five or ten minutes. You do have the option in Track Attack to go in and I'll show you here in the settings is to change the settings to high quality. So you can change that into high quality, and that will be high quality means the highest quality that we can possibly get out of the phone, uh, whatever device that you have. Uh, I believe iPhone 5 is more close to true HD, um, but at other other phones it could be a little bit less. But either way, you end up using a lot more data. Uh, a, a lot more memory space for your video. What we find is about a uh, 20 to 30 minute um, uh, session on high quality video, you end up doing between two and three gigabytes worth of video data. And it's great and all, uh, all that means is that we suggest when you do the following stuff of uploading your video to the server is that you make sure you get really close to or as close as you can to your Wi-Fi access point. Uh, you plug your phone in so that it doesn't drain the battery and then you should be good to go. So for now, I'm going to show you how to do uh, the uploading with the current session that we just recorded. So you go to Upload Data, you select it, it's going to prompt you to uh, upload it, just that one. If I had multiple sessions, you can you select just one by one. And before I hit Upload here, you also have an option over here to hit Upload All. So it's saying, hey, do you want to upload everything? So if you have five, six, seven plus uh, sessions and you just want to upload them all, boom, you hit Upload All, right? So I hit Upload All. And then it's going to get to work here. Now, one of the things that I want to uh, call out is that it's okay for you to go and do other things on the uh, um, on the phone, or sorry, on the app, 
and it will continue uploading in the background. Uh, you can also get out of the app and then come back to it, and that's perfectly fine as well. Um, it will pick up exactly where it was at, so that won't be any issue at all. As you can see, 28 megabytes goes pretty fast. And obviously, this is all dependent on uh, the quality the quality of internet connection that you have. Uh, I'm over here in the Northwest. Uh, we have Comcast, and we have one level up uh, above like the standard uh, the cable internet. It's not terribly that, that much faster. Usually you get a little bit faster download speed, but upload speeds are, uh, are, aren't that much be uh, better. Okay, so as we get closer to um, uploading the data, or finishing uploading the data, what you're gonna see if right now it's the storage, it's giving you a percentage in terms of how much it's uploaded. It's gonna move into different stages. It's showing that it's gonna be in processing stage, and then on the phone and on the server or on the site. So what that means is that the video file we're uploading it, and there's a local file version of it that's left on your phone, and there's also a version of it that's, that goes up to the site. Um, and what you can do afterwards, and I'll show you uh, once this is done uploading, is that you can also go through and delete the uh, um, uh, video from your phone once it's done processing, and then whenever you go back to you uh, play that video, it will start streaming with the data synchronized uh, overlaid uh, without any issues at all. Um, we also have a option, and I'll, I'll show it here in just a second, uh, where you can go and uh, automat set the, have the settings set so that you can automatically delete the video as soon as the app registers that, hey, the entire video has been uploaded, processed, and everything. So you'll be able to um, uh, go and it'll delete it immediately, and that way you can don't have to worry about running out of storage space on your app. I'll show you how to do that. So in the settings, uh, auto delete video. So you can set that setting there. So you go uh, hit that into on. And then again, now it'll check periodically after as the app is working to see whether that video has been successfully uploaded, processed and edited and now able to stream. And once that's done, it'll automatically delete the video. You can also manually delete the video um, in session history select that session there's also a delete video uh, button there I won't press it just to not screw with the upload um, but there you go so it looks like because I saw the the spinning progress uh, change so it looks like the uh, upload should be done so I'll go to upload video as you can see that it's in processing stage and then I'll be back here to show you guys how it looks like on the website but uh, it's only been about a couple minutes since uh, the last time that I was showing the progress in terms of the uploading and the processing on, on the server as you can see here, here is that session that I was telling you guys about earlier. All three laps are there and available. I tested playing one now. I have it paused, and I'm just going to hit play so you guys can see that. So right now, it's just like YouTube or any other uh, video streaming uh, service where we have, it, we have it hosted. It's The file has been cut down into individual laps, and we have the video playing with the synchronized overlay of data, um, just like you had it on the phone. So the difference here is uh, it's not one contained media file yet, uh, and we actually aren't going to be doing that unless it's been uh, going to be requested. Uh, the UI is a different layer, or the, the data overlay is a different layer than the video file itself, um, and we are going to be updating that to make it look exactly how it looks on the phone app uh, as well. And look for that update um, uh, coming up in the next uh, few weeks. The last thing that I want to be able to share with you guys is that uh, be beyond the UI layer on top of the video is that we're going to be adding features to uh, the site where you're going to be able be able to sh uh, share on Facebook uh, the video itself and that way people will be able to go and uh, click on that video uh, link on, on when the Facebook post that you create and then they'll be able to see just that individual lap that you wanted to share and not necessarily everything that uh, all of your other sessions that you have here. Now this is just a uh, uh, one video from uh, the simulated track that I, again from my neighborhood here that we just did today but I want to show you guys that we have a lot of other stuff uh, from in the past we have a lot of test data and a lot of uh, junk data and whatnot but here's from one of our customers from when we first launched uh, track tech uh, this is at the the Ridge Motorsports Park you can see the kind of the quality of the video uh, the camera looks a little shaky there because they were just using one of our Best Buy $25 uh, uh, kind of crappy mounts, but you can tell even be, even without uh, a really high quality mount like the Ram mount one that I showed you guys, it, and that one only costs about 65 bucks or so, it still has actually pretty dang good video. 
So I'm going to stop recording here for a second. When I come back, I'm going to show you guys how uh, the session that we created earlier is streaming live onto the phone itself without having the video stored on the phone. So I'll be back. Okay, uh, now it's been a few seconds since I stopped recording earlier, and I wanted to show you guys here, and now I pulled up the app and I went straight to the session history. As you can see here, uh, on the storage status for the session, it says it's online only. So that means that based off of the change in the settings that I did, where it said, hey, if the uh, turn on the auto delete function, which basically means again is that the app goes and checks the server to make sure that uh, to check to see the progress progress of that um, of the video once it's been uploaded, processed, and ready to view streaming online. It'll delete it locally so that way you don't it's not taking up space in your memory. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on one of the laps. And I'm going to play it back just like we did earlier, and as you can see. It's just as we did earlier. So right now that video is got edited down to an individual lap. It is being streamed from uh, the server and with the, the synchronized data overlay all at the exact same time. And just to prove one more last point, I'm gonna do two things at a time. So I'm gonna click on this lap here and have that plane. And we're still in my office, so I'm gonna scroll up over here on the computer screen. I'm going to select that same lap. And there it is. Now it's playing on uh, both the website and the app at once. Okay, so that's Track Attack, guys. Uh, thank you everybody for the time and, and checking us out. We appreciate everybody's support. Uh, feel free to continue to shoot us uh, your feedback via the support alias or our, our Facebook uh, page. And then check a look at our blog as we launch that and have more updates on future releases, um, uh, fe future uh, features, etc. Thanks a lot.